Today on Sister to Sister, we're already giggling here, but there are some really serious questions. Like people are talking about their calling, their purpose. I haven't found mine. How do I find it? Oh, I don't know about Ooh. that, Amy. But are you divorced? Mm. Are you miserable? Are you second guessing? Do you think you made a mistake? Ooh, great questions to ask today. And we've got all of that and more coming up next on Sister to Sister. Hi and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are five sisters. We've got lots of opinions. We all love the Lord and we all like to come to these questions, you know, from a biblical perspective. I'm Amy Schaefer and I'm sitting in for the one and only Kathy Seviller who's <laughs> traveling the world right now. And Tiffany Gilbert is here filling in some very big shoes very for us. Big, very big. <laughs> Actually, they're very really big. <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> Okay, so they're already oh got boy. me. And actually, they're very small shoes. Small. My foot yeah. is small. Oh. But besides that, we do have some really meaty, serious yeah. questions today that I just believe are going to, you know, help a lot of people. So let's get rolling. Tiffany, I'm coming yes. to you first. Yeah. Everyone talks about their passion, their calling. Mm -hmm. um, I have yet to find mine. Someone writes, how do I find it? Where do I go? What am I doing wrong? Yeah, well, you know, the, the what am I doing wrong stood out and I thought to myself, you're not doing anything wrong. You're doing everything right. You're expressing your hunger and passion mm -hmm. yes. to find that purpose. You know, and I think there's a practical, but there's a spiritual. I think practically speaking, what you wanna do, you wanna look at, what am I good at? What am I naturally right. good at? Right. What do I love doing? Right. And then when you merge that with, okay, I love doing this, but I would do this even if I didn't get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think you look good. at those two things, you merge those. Yeah. I think too, the second thing, spiritually, <laughs> I think you wanna turn your plate over. I think this is a time of like prayer and fasting, what the Lord, really getting the Lord's heart and mind concerning what he's called you to do. And then I think just getting uh, alone with, or along, not alone with a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that's another, no. that's another question, that's another. We don't we do, do it. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find your passion? How do you find your passion? Let's do a rewind. Let's, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's rewind that because that's that's like a no no. We don't do that. But um, <laughs> finding a good pastor that you trust that can help you navigate through that situation because what you don't want to do, you don't want to be doing something and then just you know doing something for years and years and you'll see that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody will do something for years and they're like, wait a second, I wasn't even called to do this. This isn't yeah. my purpose. I'm just doing this, you know, because I, I, I thought this was, I thought this was the right thing to do. So, yeah. Let me yeah. just jump, because when you said about the pastor. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> you know, not just that a pastor that you trust. I'd like to add to that. Yeah, sure. A uh -huh. pastor who is skillful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A pastor who is secure in who they are mm -hmm. and knows their gifting, Ooh. giftings and strengths. Wow. Because wow. there are, uh, <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the senior pastor. It could be a leader on yeah, staff sure. or mm -hmm. somebody. But the challenge is, uh, many times we've had questions about is there jealousy in the church and, you know, and in ministry. And, and the answer, the long and short answer to that is yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, but the thing of it about, um, knowing your gifting as you well put together. You know, there's something about those gifts and personality assessments that can be very helpful mm -hmm, practically. Mm -hmm, I agree. And mm -hmm. as you said, spiritually, that's a time to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. even sometimes when people are seeking to the Lord to understand if I don't know when he's speaking to me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that inner voice, mm -hmm. that compass. And, and then there's some, as you said, some practical things to measure it. What do I like to do? And what things do I get results 
doing. On, on doing. And when I get those results, how do I feel? Like yeah. when I'm doing that work, how does that make me feel? And when I see the fruit of it. And I think along with what you already mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. those are some things that are very helpful. What I find lots of times is that, because I believe the church should be a safe place. I believe we are a platform for which people can develop and use their gifts because gifts only mature by reason of use, mm -hmm. not by you doing all the assessments, mm -hmm. not by you reading all the books. Right. Like That's sometimes good. people will say to me, will you come, and I don't mean any harm, I really don't, you know, and they'll say, will you come and do an activation? Mm -hmm. And it, 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 I know we have our little Christianese and yeah. you know, yeah. it stirs, it does something in my spirit a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you want the activation without the activator mm -hmm. and that's God, that's good. you yes. know, and you don't even realize mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, so you can operate in your gifts and have no association with the giver of the right. gift. Mm -hmm. And right. that's very dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's good. Wow. I also think that sometimes our purpose, first of all, I think there's a season sometimes for what our purpose is. Oh, yeah, and that's I true. also yeah, that's think so true. Mm -hmm. that there is not it's not always what our gifting is that what our purpose is. Ooh. Because I think sometimes we're like, oh, that's not my gifting. I, I'm not going to serve there. Ooh. I'm not going to do that. That's not my gifting. Uh -oh. And oh, I think, like, <laughs> look at Moses. Like he had a, you know, he was like, um, I can't talk. I can't, you know, I'm not okay. called to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And God was like, no, <clears throat> I'm calling That's you to right. do this. Right. Mm. And I think That's that good. sometimes our purpose, like God is like, no, I want you to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though that's not like your gifting. And so I think sometimes we're not allowing God to use us in the way he wants to that's use good, us yeah. because we're that's being cool. blocked mm -hmm. by like what we wow. think mm -hmm. is our calling. And yeah. so I think we need to look at like, what does God want us to do? Mm -hmm. Like my husband, he's been working with the preschoolers mm -hmm. at church. Mm -hmm. Like that is not his spiritual gifting. Mm -hmm. Like it, no one would be like, oh, Tim Gross is like a preschool <laughs> teacher, <laughs> you know? But he has been working with them as a helper and oh my gosh, those kids love yeah. him. Yeah. Yes. And it's just wow. like, he has been so blessed by that, yeah. doing something he never thought right. that would, That's but it was right. a need and that. he filled that. And it's just like, you you get a blessing mm -hmm. and you are blessing mm -hmm. by doing something that is outside okay. of yeah. what that gifting would be. Well, and just yes. real quick, I just thought about what you said. I think that's that's so good. Mm -hmm. And I think we also need to make sure that we identify what's a fear. You know that's what I mean? True. We could Very be true. fearful that's of true. what God is calling us yes. to do. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? Good. And it's like, no, don't go forward, move forward in that. So I thought yeah. that was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. Awesome. What about you? Well, yes. I'm gonna take a little shift if I could. and. I think that before you go into any calling and looking at myself, you got to work on your character. Come on. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's key, Roxy. Mm -hmm. Our position, our title, and me as a lawyer, I can look at myself as a lawyer or I can look at myself as this whole person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I focus on the calling, I forget about all the character of God in me. And right. my right. life scripture has been Micah 6. He will show you, O oh mortal, what is good. <laughs> to love justice, love mercy, and Come walk mm -hmm. humbly, humbly with yes. God. Right. So if you, you don't have to be perfect, and I'm not saying that. Yeah. What did Jesus say to Peter? Do you love me, Peter? Mm -hmm. Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. He didn't say first, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know, mm -hmm. and he wanted Peter to know, you got to love me first, That's Peter. Right. And then... I'm going to call you to something. Mm, yeah. That's so good. That's good. That's good. Okay, Flo, I mm -hmm. see my adult children having marriage issues. Can I step in with advice or do I just leave them alone to figure it out themselves? <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, we're sitting you know here as women, real. we give advice. That's right. That's we're right. sitting in this, you know, very oh. unique. So follow me as I follow Christ. <laughs> Here's the, you know, can I step in? You can do anything. Should you step in is the real That's question. That's where it is. That's where it is. Should you? That's right. Right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You went spiritual on you. 
Got to bring it in. Got to bring it in. Got to bring it in. No, but um, really, I think that there is a blessing to being able to have access to your elders mm -hmm. and your elders having access mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, while I believe that your words should be few in, and seasoned with grace and that, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Mm -hmm. However, don't dismiss the importance and the wisdom that your in-laws will have. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about outlaws, mm -hmm. I'm talking about in-laws. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for example, Naomi yeah. had Ooh, such yes. an impact on yeah. Ruth yes. that she left pagan gods. Yes. Where you go, I'll go. That's yeah, right. That's right. right. Yeah. And so she had wow. wisdom. Yeah. Moses' story would have went completely mm -hmm. different. He'd have died before his time prematurely had he not been sensitive to his father-in-law, mm -hmm. Jethro. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Peter. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good flow. The impact, you know, it, I, you know, biblically, Peter's mother-in-law lived with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and because of Peter's relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. she was healed of a fever. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And then she went on to serve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so there is some, you know, in-laws, all jokes aside, sometimes get a bad name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I That's think all point. of us have to learn healthy boundaries and yeah, things. Right. Mm -hmm. I was the type of person, I probably, when my grandmother was alive, I talked to her every day. Mm -hmm. And I probably talked to her about everything. But I got very wise counsel mm -hmm. from her, mm -hmm. who I could not talk to every day about something going on in my home would have been my father. Mm -hmm. Cause he's coming into, mm -hmm. he's going to yes. come into rescue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I needed yeah, to yeah. know the difference. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to remember that when you are in a marriage, mm -hmm. you know, I can, Corey's my sister. I can share something with her. She's going to still be mad at my spouse when we make up this mm -hmm. evening. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And That's so, so th true. those mm -hmm. are the things that you, you have to watch, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I live down the street from my mother-in-law. And so she, you know, we're very close and I love her because I'm always right and Buck's always wrong. Oh, that's on my mother. <laughs> I think there's a right way and a wrong way to give advice. Like, I think you need to do, you need to do that without criticism. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. we all know that way of yes. like giving advice. Like, are you like throwing in little jabs yes. when you're, you know, Preaching. saying like, I noticed something oh, about, yeah. you know, I noticed you and he are really having some issues or you just sort of, you know, relating it to your own marriage. It's really That's good when yeah, you yeah. can mm -hmm. say like, yeah, we struggled with that. That's if you can really relate important. it to something that you went through. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also better if you're doing a lot more listening mm -hmm. than, yeah. you know, advising. And if you're developing a relationship with your, um, you know, grown children that are in relationships, that they can come to you with those things. You know, you have to you have to be developing that relationship far before those things are happening and, and cultivating that relationship so that they will come to you when they have those issues or that you can come to them and say like, mm -hmm. you know, I noticed you're having these issues yeah. that we can talk mm -hmm. about those and things. Kathy would always bring up the point, I'm not saying anything unless I'm asked, yes. you know? <laughs> and so, you know, in this case, as she, she really has a good Good point you know yes. you want to ask because remember you can address things that's the, the wonderful thing about being in God mm. I don't have to open my mouth because right. I can get it done on Praise. my knees yeah, that's, right. Amen. that's Amen. where I'm headed <laughs> mm -hmm. I love when my children text or call mm -hmm. and say mom just pray yeah. mm -hmm. and then I know because when if we jump into the problem or me, I'm not saying everybody, wants to control or solve or get to the solution. Only the Spirit of God can do what human flesh can't do. Mm, so and when they so text and they say, Mom, please pray, then you know, okay, Lord, you gotta, I got to pray first. They want me to pray. They might not want me to know details, but they want me involved. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all I can say to you, create an atmosphere when they say something, when they do something, I'm gonna pray. And then, because always he has the answer, we don't know, as smart as we ladies are, <laughs> or we think we are, we don't have the answer on the real problem. Yeah. 
yeah. often. There's an underlying yeah. issue. Yeah. I really need that wisdom because I love to tell my kids what to do. <laughs> like, love it. Like, yes. I, I'm, I feel like almost responsible to yeah. tell them. But key word, you said your children. When yeah. your children get married, you, you are now not counseling just your child. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're yes. counseling an adult in a relationship. And, and you know yeah. what? I thought about that too, because I'm mm. thinking, I tell my children what to do all the time right now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because of where they are, right, you right. know? And I think we have to be careful that we're not projecting what we want yes. on that relationship. Yes. So we're kind of getting in that's there true. and that's we're just, because we want it to and move. And they're going to please you. They're going to please you. And not God. Yeah, and that's so true. And I think the yes. wisdom piece mm -hmm. is so key. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to share, what to share. And yeah. also because you may be robbing them of an opportunity to grow together that's in so conflict. Good. That is yes. so good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, those are yeah. good answers. I am taking notes because I have young adult children mm -hmm. and you maybe need to pray for them because I love to <laughs> tell them what to do all the time. But one thing is for sure, we're gonna tell you what to do. You wait for us. We're gonna be right back after this break. Thanks for staying with us. We just love that you are part of our world and our life. And we love to talk about real questions, real life. And these are some serious real life questions. Roxanne, I'm coming to you first. I thought after my divorce, I would finally be happy. This is so heartbreaking. I'm miserable and I'm second guessing every decision I make. What do we do? Yeah, this is, I lived a thousand deaths with my divorce clients. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. I'm telling you, and some mm -hmm. of them have said this, it's worse than death. Uh. Because you're not only dealing with them passing, you're dealing mm -hmm. with a possible rejection, mm -hmm. the brokenness of your children, mm -hmm. the change in lifestyle, the change in income and lifestyle, and that, that feeling that, the vase is broken and I can't glue it back together. Mm -hmm. That feeling of I failed. Mm -hmm. So I understand this. And all I could stay is, say is this. In 1 Peter, he says, the God of all grace can restore anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may have felt like you made a mistake you jumped to divorce too early. You went and uh, slept with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not condoning any activity that goes against scripture, mm -hmm. but God is a restorer mm -hmm. when we repent. Mm -hmm. yes. Look, mm -hmm. Peter denied Christ mm -hmm. three yeah, times. Good, right? mm -hmm. He swore. Mm -hmm. He got mad. I denied him. I don't know him. He was so close to Christ. God was building his church with Peter. Yet Jesus came back and said, do you love me, Peter? God reaches out to you. Let him reach out to you. Do you love me? All Jesus is saying to you, do you love me? And he said to Peter, go feed my sheep. Your failure's gone. Go forward with what we've been talking about, your calling. Mm -hmm. wow. Roxy, I am so thankful you're on this panel. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you mm -hmm. always bring such a, a godly perspective and, and you make us mm -hmm. go be, beyond, um, you make us go behind the veil. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so blessed, I'm just really blessed to have you on here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm blessed to be with you guys. You know, for me, what I thought, what, what, what stood out to me um, was the fact that <clears throat> She's miserable. She thought she'd be happy after she got divorced, mm -hmm. which makes me go, so was it the marriage that was making you miserable to begin with? Mm -hmm. That's yes. so true. Like, what were you dealing with? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And so sometimes, you know, number one, you know, and I, I'm sure you guys have counseled people getting married, you know, you don't marry to be happy, as you have well said yes. on several different right. occasions. Um, you marry because it is a part of the plan of God for your life That's and right. there is purpose in there that the two of you are mm -hmm. to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps give us a different perspective when we, because you're going to hit some rough patches. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just life. You got two different personalities, two different backgrounds coming together, you know, 
But I also think, in fact, I was just talking to someone and they're trying to fix mm. a person. Mm. Yes. And this person had issues before yeah. Yeah. they proposed mm -hmm. to them, before mm -hmm. they got married. And they went into this thinking, yes, I know this person has these challenges, but I'm trying to help them with that. Mm. It, sometimes it takes that outside, right? Yes, you right, know? right. I mean, I look at it this way. If God himself has the Godhead, why do you think you can fix it all yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's the counsel mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And so, you know, there have been things that, you know, dare I say, now that my husband is home with God and can't be here to defend himself, I can. <laughs> my mom will defend him. Yeah, yes, yeah, she will. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are many things that I reflect back on, you know, in, um, in our 37 years of marriage. And, you know, it's not always easy to say, but sometimes there are battles that you're having with a person, but they really are your own battle. Come yes. on. And you're projecting right. it That's onto right. them. Wow. That's good. Wow. You know, it's funny, you mentioned about the marriage piece, and I've always mm -hmm. heard that marriage is not to make you happy, but it's to make you holy. Mm. And that's what it's about. You know, when I read this, I immediately I saw the word healing. Okay. Like there's okay. healing that mm. she needs. Yeah, you know, and I would ask her, hey, what does your relationship with the Lord look like? Mm. Are you connected to the vine? Because it seems to me, I, I would want to know, are you trying to fill things, you know, the, the places in your heart, the places in your life with people, things that where God should only be? Mm, that's good. You know, that's what I would kind of want to know with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Last question. How do I raise my children to know a good God or father when their father is not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I mean, that's a real question. You know, yes, we're, yes. they're comparing their heavenly father to their earthly yeah, father. Yeah. And that might not be such a good thing, Flo. Mm -hmm. You know what? And it's unavoidable. Even if people don't realize it, yeah. subconsciously, that thing is there. I do a lot of teaching on prayer, and this is the fir one of the first things that I hit, and we spend a lot of time on it, because even when Jesus gave the pattern and how we should pe pray, he starts off with our Father. Yes. And so when I am, have the privilege of sharing with people and training people, and we have this conversation about prayer, mm -hmm. When they have a relationship with the, or depending on how the relationship is with their father is how they see mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. yes. So staying in, in course with the question, how do I raise children to know a good God when daddy has issues? You know, I believe that you point them to trust God at an early age. Uh, yes. Make them a yeah. part, not, not pointing out his flaws, but make them a part of the, the prayer for the family mm -hmm, and the prayer mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. for the home. And then let's say daddy is not a good provider. I'm just hypothetically throwing something out there. Mm -hmm. Teach them how to trust God. Let's pray yes. and ask God for yes. this. Don't make it look like, well, you know, your dad's not doing this and your dad. And it's and sometimes sure. we all know we shouldn't do it, mm -hmm. but we also know that it's not the easiest thing when you're mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. We say and do a lot of things yes. that we shouldn't do. Yeah. And sometimes in the home, which is an intimate place, you want somebody to come along and agree with you and understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And as you said in one of the earlier questions, we got to watch that we don't drag children into things. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Very so I, mm -hmm. I really, as... I just think this is another example of a great teachable moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I immediately thought of Timothy in the Bible yes. and of Lois and Eunice and yes. how they always, they lived godly lives. They pointed to God at all times. And Timothy, you know, they're pointed out in the Bible and Timothy is a pillar of faith, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? And mm -hmm. so they, you know, they were, you know, examples in the Bible of a mother and a grandmother that raised up Timothy and pointed exactly. to the Lord at That's all right. times. That the Apostle Paul yes. called yes. out their names, Eunice, mm -hmm. Lois, yes. you have that same kind of faith. So listen, keep going, keep walking with God, keep sharing and showing your faith before your children, whether you're a good dad or a bad dad or a good mom or a bad mom. Just keep pointing them to Jesus. And we'll be right back with the scripture right after this break. I'm reading from 1 Timothy mm. chapter 4, verse 10. That is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, and especially of those 
who believe. In this chapter, to labor and strive refers to growing in godliness and God's word, not chasing myths and man-made doctrines. Godliness in verse 12 is honoring God in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. My father had a zeal for God's word. Not only did he study and memorize it, he lived it. Mm -hmm. Visiting the elderly in nursing homes, praying for the sick in hospitals, uh, giving food to the needy. He brought joy and hope. Mm -hmm. And my personal touching one is that he even escorted, volunteered to escort cancer patients to their treatments in the hospital. Wow, he lived God's word. Let's strive not only to study God's word, but to put God's word into action, even in some small way. What is God calling you to? What small thing can you be faithful in to show God's love to somebody else? You know, it is a foundation of our faith that he is a good father, that he is a God of love. I have a homework assignment for you. Go look up a song. He's a good, good father. That's who you are, that's who you are. And don't forget, as iron sharpens iron, so one sister sharpens another. We'll see you next week on Sister to Sister.